Good afternoon, everyone. I am as Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. In this video, I want to do part two on the topic of religious hypocrisy and the gray area of evil. In this video, what I'm going to try to do is to apply the concepts that that we examined in the previous video, part one, and apply them to the larger systems that are in place in the world, and in particular relate them to the, the last days that we are currently in. And Christians who are aware and, and paying attention, if they're watching and praying, can see things unfolding in the world that clearly indicate that the time is short. And for that reason, I believe this message is of great importance uh, to Christians. Now, what we were speaking about is the, the way that evil manifests in human relationships and how this is related to narcissism and to codependency, and that both of these parts are necessary for evil to thrunk for, e pardon me, for evil to function and to thrive in the world. And because these characteristics in humanity have been around for a very long time and are spoken of throughout Scripture, they end up manifesting not only in families, but also in, on a grand scale in governments and human systems as a whole. Now, one way that this manifests, of course, is that narcissism has become much more widespread and is part of now the, the public consciousness. So most people are aware of what it is, and they describe it in terms of being a mental health problem, but, but really it, it's a sin problem. And I've gone into that before, so I'm not going to go into that right now. But I'm going to read from the scripture now in 2 Timothy chapter 3, and we will begin with verse 1. It says here in the Holy Word, it says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Now we can clearly see here are the traits of narcissism, narcissism being described in the scripture. And in particular, when it says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Here we can see in scripture referred to the hypocrisy, the false self of what is now manifesting in the world as a religious system. Now, in my first video, I did say that I wanted, in particular, because this is a Christian channel, to focus on religious hypocrisy. So the title of this video is Religious Hypocrisy and the Gray Area of Evil, Part 2. Now, what we have currently is a merging of government with religious power in order to form a global beast system. Now, this B system is narcissistic in its characteristics. So it's arrogant, it's prideful, it's hypocritical, it's deceptive, it calls, it inverts goodness and evil. So what is evil, what is deemed evil in the Holy Scripture and to God's people is deemed good in this new world system. And what is deemed to be good in the Holy Scripture, according to God's Word, is deemed to be evil. Now I'm going to speak for a minute here about propaganda. 
propaganda is the use of language and media, be it um, online media, printed media, books, newspapers, television, radio, but any kind of media. And it's used to control what people think. And what, what's happening now with this new world system that is coming into power is that increasingly freedom is being restricted. In the beginning of this, I want to first address how this system is, has come into power, how it's coming into power right now. And I'm going to do so talking about these things from a general perspective. I'm not going to name any names. I'm not going to uh, isolate any particular individuals. I'm going to be talking about the characteristics and how this system comes into play and how the system operates. So if we go to the book of Daniel, chapter 11, and we'll read there verse 21. So Daniel chapter 11 and verse 21. And if you're a regular listener of mine, you know that I do ask people to try to look up the scriptures with me and read the scripture for yourself because there is no better defense against a lie than knowing the truth. And when you can read the Bible for yourself, it gets into you differently and you will be able to recognize religious hypocrisy much better if you're familiar with the Word of God. So that's why I, I do encourage people, one of the many reasons why I encourage people to read along with me. So Daniel chapter 11 and verse 21. And of course, those familiar with prophecy realize that this particular passage is describing the Antichrist or the man of sin. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. Now, if you watched my first video uh, on this topic, we did cover how a narcissist will, will often seduce a person into a relationship with them by flattering them, by giving them gifts, by uh, immersing them in all kinds of romanticism and love and giving them lots of compliments. And this is the same way that the narcissistic system operates and gets power. It tells people what they want to hear. Now, some of us who are familiar with scripture, we're aware of a passage that says that they shall heap up to themselves teachers having itching ears. Now, when we read of this, what it's talking about is it's talking about the Ahab spirit that exists in the society at, as a whole, where people have sought to have people in power in the churches, whether they be pastors or preachers or priests or bishops or even a pope, where these people tell them what they want to hear. So it's a combination. You have the system that is seeking power, that flatters people and tells them what they want to hear. For example, it might bring forward a prophet that will tell them that the United States of America will be restored to her former greatness and prosperity. All right, so they will have a prophet come forward in the churches and represent a political candidate that way, all right? And that's part of it. But the biggest part of how this comes into fruition is that the majority of people are being fed something that they want to hear. And what they want to hear is that their personal comfort and, and their financial prosperity and their way of life is going to be restored by God, and that they are not going to be judged for the evil that they are giving assent to. So you can see that there are similarities between a narcissistic system and a family, where you have a narcissistic abu abuser and a codependent enabler. It's a similar system 
that happens throughout the world and it's happening now in the global system. You now there are people who are atheists who criticize Christianity and part of why they cr criticize Christianity is because of exactly this. It's the, the, the cooperation with evil based on self-interest and the refusal to be have any real integrity all right so many many people have been actually turned away from the way of following jesus christ because of the hypocrisy in the churches that currently exists now this is similar to what a child might feel being raised in a narcissistic family where they're being treated very badly by the narcissistic parent and the enabling parent who does have some sense of right and wrong is not taking a stand on their behalf to defend them from the abuse. So this kind of hypocrisy in a family, what it can do is it can make the, the, the scapegoat child fall into rebellion. And this is another factor of what happens on a grander scale is that people who see the hypocrisy, the rampant hypocrisy in religious systems, that they fall into rebellion because they know there's something wrong here. They see the fake holiness. They see the, the fake uh, Christianity. So people who are claiming to, to speak for Jesus Christ and not living according to what Jesus Christ taught. And because of this, they're not familiar with the scripture. They're not familiar with anything other than what the behaviors they see manifest. And because of this, many, many people who might have been turned to the truth of God's word and, and found salvation in Jesus Christ don't find it because they are offended by the hypocrisy. All right? I want to turn now to a scripture in the Old Testament in the book of Isaiah, chapter 28. And, and we will begin with verse 10 here. And the reason I'm going to read this passage is to explore a little bit how it is that religious hypocrisy comes into play through uh, theology. All right? So let's read here. It says in verse 10, For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with a stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people, to whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. So this is talking about the Holy Spirit coming upon the people who are disciples of Jesus Christ, people who are obedient to the gospel, who are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and filled with the Holy Ghost. It's saying that this is the rest. So this is the way that people cease from their own works and have the works of Jesus Christ in them. It's about the righteousness of Jesus Christ in the Christian. Okay, and this is the refreshing. All right, so this is how the, the human being is saved from sin and, and able to live a holy life. And then it says, and yet they would not hear. But the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. What has happened, basically, and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about this. I have other videos. If you're interested and you can't find them, please feel free to let me know and I'll give you a link. All right. But basically what's happened is the word of God has been changed in many, the use of many, many translations that confuse people as to the word of God. 
and what it really says. And then we have scholars who come in claiming to understand Greek and Hebrew better than the men that God ordained to translate the Holy Bible. And, and they will interpret for you what scripture, what they th say scripture ought to say rather than what it really does say. All right. And there are many, many false doctrines that spring forth from this practice. And that's what's being described here in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah is that, that they take a little bit here and a little bit there out of the Bible and they bring it together and they, they tell you a fairy tale and they create for you a different God and a different gospel. And you are snared, and you are falling backward, and you are taken. This is what has happened to the majority of Christian people these days, is they no longer worship God in spirit and in truth, and they instead worship a pagan idol known as the triune God, which in Babylon consisted of Baal, Nimrod, is another name for Baal, okay, Tammuz, which was the son of Nimrod, and Semiramis, which would be Ashtoreth. So we have the goddess worship and, and Baal, which is the sun god, and then the reincarnated sun god in the infant child in the moon goddess's arms, all right? So it's sun, moon, and the reincarnated sun god in the form of a infant, a baby in the arms of the mother goddess. And that is what Christianity for the for the most part has become in these last times. And it's because of the fact that most people do not read their Bible or they read a Bible that was deliberately corrupted. And they believe people who go to theological schools, seminaries to become educated and these people interpret for them the scriptures rather than people reading the scripture for themselves. And what this does is people then fall into a snare. And once they have been given over into this snare and they have been told, for example, that God wants you to be happy and wealthy and powerful in this world, or they might believe that uh, it's okay to have had multiple marriages. Uh, it might they might tell you that it's okay. It doesn't matter if uh, you practice a form of sexuality that is outside of God's order. It doesn't matter if you take uh, concoctions that are um, uh, operation of witchcrafts, such as pharmaceutical drugs. That it doesn't matter. That, that all kinds of mixture and blending comes in because the scripture has been perverted, first of all, and also because the scripture that has not been perverted, people don't read. All right? Now let's talk about um, the way narcissism and codependency, how these, the traits of these things manifest in these larger systems. And one thing that we need to recognize is that when we're talking about a personality problem where someone has been given over to darkness or someone is subservient to darkness, that these are personality characteristics in an individual. But they can also manifest in, in a larger way in terms of a whole culture. So one thing is when we're talking about a false self, all right, this is actually what the Antichrist is, because the Antichrist is a false Christ. It's a person who represents himself as Jesus, but is not Jesus. That's a false self, and what's actually happening is something very different. So it's an inversion a turning upside down of the truth. All right. So this again is a form of hypocrisy, but it is the presentation of something that is false. So we're going to go into this a little bit more deeply. 
let's go in the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, and verse 20. And here we read, Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil, and put darkness for light, and light for darkness, and that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes, and prudent in their own sight. And then we'll read in verse 23, which justify the wicked for reward, and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. So this is not only describing what happens when a person is narcissistically abused. And those of us who have endured this sort of thing, we know what it's like when we are actually viewed not only by the narcissist, but by all the people around us as being the problem, right? That the, the narcissist is a master of managing perceptions and getting everyone around us to think that we are the one who, who's in the wrong, all right? So calling evil good and good evil is something that also happens on a societal scale. And when that happens, then it, they justify the wicked for reward. Well, what is this? This is bribery. This is when someone is given something in order, in order to um, continue the perpetration of evil. In other words, the obtaining of power by certain individuals who have dark intentions. One of the things that people in the world just generally have trouble with is the idea of why would anyone do the kinds of things that people in power now do, such as destroying the earth and uh, poisoning the water supply and, and, and poisoning the air supply. Why, why would anyone do such a thing? I mean, it's, it's not only pathological, but they have children too. And, and the thing that, that you have to recognize is that this is a diseased system. It's a pathological, self-destructive system, and it, it's insane, all right? And you can't expect it to make sense. What you can do, though, is you can see it for what it is and stop expecting it to be reasonable. And when you stop expecting it to be reasonable, you'll be able to see it a lot more clearly. Let's talk about just some of the characteristics then of this inversion. Okay, so we're talking about the Antichrist system and some of the ways that, that things are inverted. Okay, so first of all, it makes a mockery of everything that is good. Everything that God created, it makes a mockery of it. It undermines marriage in, term, in terms of its um, government policies. And it, and it undermines life in terms of its government policies. So policies about divorce, policies that encourage women to enter the workforce, Marxist policies in general regarding the family that get uh, the children out of the care of their parents and into the care of the state, that all of this is an inversion of the morality that once supported families. So government that once supported families because it knew that when you have strong families, you have intelligent and capable citizens, all right? So the Marxist system comes along and undermines the family because it knows that when you do that and you corrupt people morally, that they're unable to rule themselves. So it's necessary to have the strong arm of government to rule them because they are not self-ruled. Okay, so it's the opposite of freedom. So it's the inversion. And even though it's represented in the media as being democracy and choice and liberation and all these nice sounding words, what it's really about is it's about destruction of human relationships, the undermining of God's order and the ending of freedom so that certain individuals can gain world power. Now, another inversion of, of this system is that it, it, it brings forward in 
under the guise of Christianity, goddess worship. So slowly it introduces the idea that first of all, God is neither male nor female, but both. And this is not true. God is male. And God is not part female and part male. Another concept that was slowly introduced is that the idea that that Mary was um, the mother of God and, and someone that we should worship. And of course, the mother and the child, just the, the power basis of any maternal relationship with an infant, of course, is that the mother is more powerful than the child is, and that the mother is the one who's the moral authority. So it turns into goddess worship. And through feminism, and, and, and gradually undermining God's order in the churches, what we have had is that women have been rewarded for rebelling against the things that are said in scripture about how women should behave. So women taking authority over men in the churches, teaching in the churches, praying and prophesying with their heads uncovered, being dictators in their own marriages, in their homes, uh, being the, the one who wears the pants in the family, both literally and physically. Another inversion that came from this, of course, is homosexuality and the idea that one could change one's gender. And that this starts to get into a whole new level of rebellion where uh, scientism came in and we, we then started to think of ourselves as being able to, to change things about ourselves. It might have started with plastic surgery and maybe having uh, breast augmentation surgery or having surgery to perhaps even something that seems innocuous enough like like uh, correcting our vision or or improving parts of us that we don't like maybe we're overweight so we have part parts of our our stomach removed so so that we can be more attractive or, or even more healthy that all of these things are the beginning of, of human beings taking power to change themselves in a way that is not godly, and it's outside of God's order. And after that, of course, came changing one's gender. And, of course, the, the propaganda represents it as that anyone who, who speaks against this is hateful and unloving and, and doesn't have compassion for people when in fact the opposite is true because if someone is given over to something like this if they're actually um, being lured into mutilating their body and, and paying exorbitant amounts of money to surgeons to mutilate their body that this is not something that it is loving to support and I don't know if any of you have ever seen uh, a transgender individual who is older and what becomes of that person but I have and, and let me tell you something that that person was done no favors at all by being fed hormones by having surgical changes done and, and it, it's quite a, a horrific thing to witness what happens to a person when this um, false flesh begins to decay all right um, another inversion, of course, is that that uh, women are oppressed by having to bear children and that they should have the power over their own body and that it's a, a freedom that women need to have to murder their own babies. And, of course, this is, is not a freedom. And a person who does this uh, suffers enormously for the rest of their life because of the guilt of what they did, the blood guiltiness of what they did. And, and it's not about freedom. It's actually about bondage. So this is, again, a kind of inversion. Another one is, is that women should be free to work. Women should be free to earn just as much as men do. Women should be able to be free 
pretty much to dress as they want, do as they want, um, no matter who it hurts. And, and the problem is that that when you have th this kind of a uh, government supported uh, of women to, to do these things, what happens is that it undermines the role of the, of the husband and father in the family. And this causes social decay. It causes children uh, to not do well because children need their mothers. That's true. But they need their fathers too. And women, if they are not cared for by their husband when they are pregnant, uh, when they are caring for young children, if they're not under the authority of their husband, well, guess what? They're going to be under the authority of someone, and it's not going to be good. It's going to be the state, and it's going to be the state dictating to that woman what she can and cannot do with her children, all right? And this can come down to things like forced drugging of children and children who have behavioral problems, forced um, children put into foster care, when when they're unmanageable, uh, it can be uh, forcible removal of children from parents because they object to sex change operations or psychiatric medications. Or um, basically, what this is is that when women are taken out from the care and protection of their husband, who loves them, hopefully, then what happens is they are then they are turned into sexual objects for for the use of the state and their children are the property of the state now if you look around you what you will see is a manifestation of this that women no longer dress with dignity they no longer have self-respect uh, there are things all over the place online where women are exalting their sexuality in, in such a way that they don't appear to know that they're degraded by these things, all right? When a person looks at a woman, they should see her spirit. They should see her soul, her heart, her goodness, all right, and not her sexuality. This is a private thing that should be kept uh, clean for, for her relationship with her husband. But when a woman dresses in such a way where her sexuality is all that anyone can think about when they're in her presence. That doesn't elevate her. That degrades her. That's not any kind of freedom. All right? Another kind of in inversion that, that I just mentioned, but I'm going to just give it a, a title, is the violation of God's boundaries. So the mixture of genetic material such as uh, pigs and humans or bacteria and human d DNA in order to make medicines to prolong life um, for various treatments of diseases that that this is a violation of God's boundaries all right when he created everything to reproduce after its own kind that he put a seed in everything whether it's a human being or it's a plant or an animal these seeds were not intended to be mixed. And yet, this is something that happened before before um, Noah's flood. And it was what ended up with the destruction of, of the world at that time. All right? So this is a violation of boundaries. And those of us who have experience with narcissists know that they like to violate boundaries because it's very provocative. And, and when they violate boundaries, they can seem like a very free spirit, spirited and independent and exciting individual. But really, when people violate boundaries, ultimately it causes a lot of harm. All right. Now, uh, transhumanism, the use of um, blending of genetic material are, are one kind of violation of boundaries. Another kind of violation of boundaries is the use of surveillance and uh, controlling of people's behavior and speech through the use of surveillance. And ultimately, what happens is through all this control and all this manipulation is the opposite of freedom. And it's a police state that comes into play because people are unable to morally 
discern right and wrong for themselves. They fall into anarchy. And then from that anarchy arises a global authority. All right. So I hope that that was quite a lot to of information to cover. But all of these are characteristics of the global system that is currently coming into power. So it's a system. It's a religious system that also has state power. All right. Now, this system uses propaganda in order to vilify those who are good. All right. So we read in the scripture about calling evil good and good evil. And we recognize that this is a pattern in narcissistic systems where the target of the abuse often has the impressions of others managed or created so that they are isolated and alone and more able to be abused. All right. So the same thing manifests in the larger system. So the use of propaganda to slander and ridicule, the use of name calling and labeling, and in particular, the dehumanizing of the person that you want to target. Now, this is an antichrist system. So it is both imitation Christ, but it's also against Christ. So it's against Christians. And one way that th this has been um, brought into being is that uh, a certain individual, uh, a political individual, will associate himself with Christianity, claim to be a Christian, and then behave badly. And those who are keen to religious hypocrisy will see, you know, hordes of Christians supporting this political candidate because, of course, they have believed the false prophecies regarding him. And they they see this hypocrisy of, of the, the, the majority of Christians. And they also see that this man is claiming to be a Christian, but he's a, a warmonger and he's he's extremely rich and extremely powerful and not particularly Christian in his behavior. He is living in adultery, for example, um, and that he is not doing the things that he said he would do. So nothing is happening to change social policies either. And the poor are being increasingly oppressed. Corporations are given more and more power. And all of this was done through the use of trickery and lies in the form of flattery. So telling people one thing and giving them another. Now, if you have experience with a narcissist, you are familiar with a technique known as the bait and switch. Okay, so it, it's basically that you are promised one thing, and so you accept the deal. And then when you accept the deal, you find out that you agreed to something quite different than what you really meant. All right, and, and th this is... Um, what is happening on a grand scale right now politically in the world. It's a bait and switch. And we have a, a religious people who are very greedy for power and control. And they are pretending to be one thing when in fact they're something quite different. So they're pretending to be very holy and very righteous and very loving and very humble when in fact uh, they had associations with kidnap and torture and murder and the exploitation of children. Now, when we, another way that the system uh, often manifests its hypocrisy is to say that it cares about children, cares about children's rights, about the protection of children, keeping children from being abused. But really what it's about is getting the children away from the care of the loving parents so that they can be exploited. And you can see this if you just look beyond the propaganda to, to actually witness what is actually happening. Now, finally, I, I want to talk about God's system and, and how we can distinguish between God's order and God's government and the Antichrist government, because many, many Christians these days are deceived 
and they actually think that they're taking part in something that's good and bringing political power to Christians, when in fact, this is a bait and switch. <laughs> they have been promised political power so that they can change certain social uh, evils. And what's happening is they're, they're, they are giving their power to the Antichrist. All right, so this political power that they seek is not for Christians. It's for this global system that is, is using trickery and flattery to obtain power. All right, so we do want to be able to recognize the government of Jesus Christ and what it actually looks like when you have um, Jesus Christ ruling. All right, and that, that would be individual freedom of expression and and holiness and righteousness in individuals. You have order, you have peace, and you have peaceableness between people. You don't need a lot of police and you don't have a lot of chaos. What you have is you have order and peaceableness because people are regulated, personally regulated according to the scripture. And when people hold themselves to God's laws and conform themselves to God's order, then it's not necessary to have a huge government. It's not necessary to have a huge welfare state. It's not necessary to have huge taxes. And it's also impossible to, to fool the people because they are righteous people and they can discern good from evil. All right. Another thing is that the people have honor and dignity and they are, they know how to respect themselves and respect other people. And they also, um, this kind of system, a Christian system, protects children in that it protects marriage and it honors the relationship between men and women. Now I'm going to just expose a, a common lie here that that women were discriminated against in employment and that they were unfairly treated in employment and and still don't make as much money as men do for the same job and this is just propaganda it's not true at all women have always worked right alongside of men and that the division of labor in a family was decided in the family and not by government and until government came along, Marxist ideology in the form of government came along to interfere with that, women, for the most part, preferred to, to do things like raise their own children and take care of their own home. Uh, not that long ago, before the Industrial Revolution, men and women primarily lived together um, as a work unit. So the, the man might go, um, he might have a farm, he might go hunting, he, he might uh, work building homes as a carpenter or building tents, or, or he might provide some other service, he might be a silversmith or a blacksmith, but he would work doing the heavy labor and the woman would do the labor in the home, the preparation of the food, the care of the home, the care of the children, not because this was some kind of oppression, but women liked caring for the home and the children. And, and this was more suited to, to the sensitivities of the woman. And Marxists came along and said, there's something wrong with this, because when a man goes and uh, tries to get a job at a factory, uh, the employer is more likely to hire him because he knows that man is, is obligated to provide for his wife and children. And so he's going to be a better employee. But the woman, if a woman goes and applies for that same job, he's going to say, well, she's going to get married. She's not going to stay here. And she's not as physically strong. She's more likely to get injured. And so I'm not going to hire her. And this was a, a natural condition of biology and not about discrimination and that men were given higher wages was because they were expected to support the family and part of the lie about discrimination against women was to displace men 
from being able to support their families and make women more able to earn a, an income than men. Affirmative action was never about equality. It was always about preference. And this preference had an agenda behind it. It was to undermine marriage, which it did. After affirmative action was instituted, marriage and marriages ended on a grand scale because women uh, were enticed into thinking that, that it was better to have a career than, than to be subject to their own husband. And now what we have years and years later is the majority of women are alone. They no longer have a husband. They are alone. Uh, sometimes with children, sometimes their children are grown, but they are responsible for supporting themselves and they do not have a husband, they do not have a, a life companion and this is not a, a good way for your life to end. To look back on your life and, and see sexual promiscuity, maybe an abortion or two, maybe your children have more than one father, Maybe your husband was abusive um, and, and that this is a trail of sorrow that has been largely caused by Marxist policy in the family. All right. Now, I'm not excusing bad behavior on the part of men and I'm not excusing bad behavior on the part of women either. What I'm saying here is that this has been an orchestrated attempt by people who want global power. Because when they undermined marriage, they got the kids, they got the children. And when they got the children, that, then it, it's pretty much a done deal. Because when you have them indoctrinating the children with Marxist, Satanist ideology, then Christianity, it's easy to lie to them about what Christianity is. Because there's no one in the home teaching them anymore. All right? So... I think we, we've covered the Antichrist system and how it resembles narcissism. I just want to add um, and emphasize again that the number of people who are seeking this kind of global power are a very small minority. And the only reason that they can get away with this huge deception is because they, they corrupt and co-opt people to be part of it. Sometimes it's by giving them privileges. It, it can be in giving them, for example, preference for employment. Uh, but it can also be in terms of just telling them pretty lies. Telling them that, you know, our soldiers go overseas to defend American freedom when our soldiers go overseas to steal other people's national resources and to subjugate them to this global system. All right. So they tell us pretty lies. All right. They tell us that that we can be prosperous and great again when we are an immoral and corrupt people who have turned against God. All right. So finally, what I want to close with here is that true Christianity is not hypocritical. True Christianity is willing to examine itself and to humble itself before God. And we all as a nation need to examine ourselves um, about how we have cooperated with this evil. If we cannot do that, this evil will gather itself and obtain this world power. There will be no place to hide. And there is one group that it hates, and that's God's people. All right. So when you have someone attaining p political power through the use of flattery and lies, hypocritically claiming to be a Christian, that one day the rage of the atheists, the people who, who are unbelievers, who hate that hypocrisy, will turn on God's people and feel very justified in exterminating them. In the use of propaganda in World War II in Nazi Germany, and it wasn't only there, it was also in Soviet Russia and in Mao Zedong's uh, China uh, and other communist countries. But in socialism, what they do is the enemy is vilified in the media. So in Hitler's Germany, 
Jewish people and, and others were represented as vermin. Okay. And, and now the, the modern day propaganda is that someone is a fundamentalist or a terrorist or an extremist and that they, their views are violent and dangerous and hateful. So uh, a Christian who, who might want to warn their children about the dangers of transgenderism or if they might want to educate them about God and about God's word that this is seen as a kind of hate crime and more and more people are beginning to look at Christians as being hypocritical and many of them are I'm not denying that but even God's people who are not hypocritical and as also seeing them as being dangerous um, terrorists and hate mongers and people who are a threat and the, the only thing that a Christian is a threat to is to deception because a person who lives with the integrity that they learn from the Holy Scriptures is a threat to all dishonesty and all deceit all right so you know I, I don't think that these systems are going to be torn down but I do think that that many people can become awakened to this and then come to the understanding that their scripture has been changed and they have been led to believe that God is something that the scripture says otherwise they've been led to believe that God is not one but three they have been led to believe that Jesus Christ was not the only begotten Son of God but was the eternally begotten um, God the Son who had a pre-existence and was not in fact a man and everything that God says about himself and about his Son and his Holy Word has been twisted and Satanists have come along and said then well how can you know how can you know what is true there is no such thing as truth when a Christian then stands up and says yes there is truth there is one truth there is one absolute truth Jesus Christ is the absolute truth and his word is perfect and I for, for one will worship God and in spirit and in truth from his holy word and I will not follow any man, any leader. I will not tell any lie. I will not bow down before any idol. And, and, and when th this is what is required of a Christian, is to be able to discern the truth. Jesus said, I don't come to bring peace on the earth, but a sword. And this is his sword. His holy word is his sword. And this divides people and he was hated and he was crucified Jesus said a servant is not greater than his master and in the early church people died for their faith and people have been dying for their faith throughout the generations ever since then and when you see Christianity coming into political power wanting global power under something called dominionism you can see that this is the Antichrist all right you can see the hypocritical nature of this when people are looking for wealth and fame and power all right so if you have questions about salvation please feel free to email me uh, it's imperative in these last times to recognize that these deceits have been propagated on the people for hundreds of years and many people have been led to believe not only in another Jesus but in a false gospel and they have been misled into thinking they're saved when they're not so if you're not sure about that if you're not sure what I'm talking about please feel free to email me I will also leave a link to a video on this topic in the description box below so that you might begin to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ as it is written in the Holy Scripture and decide for yourself whether or not maybe you have been deceived because this is really important 
if you are not saved, if you are not saved, then, then you are in great peril right now because the time is very short. So I urge you to watch the video in the description box and to also email me or comment below if you have further questions. This channel is a Christian channel, primarily for Christian women. But feel free to share this around if you think it might benefit someone. And please know that all of you are in my prayers.